Hello guys, Winston here. We are nearing the second quarter of 2019 and I have still yet to really get into a rhythm with my projects. It's been a non-stop struggle fest to get set up in my new shop and Pavel, the Pocket NC V210, has been sitting silently in the corner the whole time, but his stagnation will come to an end soon enough. And yes, I gave him a name, constantly calling it the Pocket NC seems weird. It's both the machine name and the company name. That's about as awkward as if I started calling my Nomad the Carbide 3D or if I invented the concept of a creature that can only say its own name and turn it into a franchise hinging on Ryan Reynolds. Anyhow, V210 just sounds a little too impersonal to keep repeating, so this is Pavel, which is fitting because the name connotes small or modest. I've got an upcoming project I think would be a fantastic 5-axis exercise, but before I can begin to tackle it, I need a way to hold a rectangular block of stock on my machine. Workholding on a 5-axis machine has traditionally been tricky at best, and the current Pocket NC ecosystem doesn't buck the trend. The only ways to hold stock on it out of the box are to use a baby vise or an ER40 collet. Neither of these is particularly useful for holding large rectangular pieces of stock. My podcast co-host Eddie has designed a bunch of custom workholding contraptions before for his Pocket NC, and he gave me the idea to design a custom fixture to hold the 1-inch bar stock I needed for an upcoming collab. So here's the idea. Machine a platform with a short stubby face that I can bolt my bar stock to, it'll match Pavel's B-table bolt pattern and hopefully be strong enough to suppress any vibrations from machining an awkwardly tall part. My material of choice for this platform would be Delrin, but I couldn't scrounge up any at Carbide 3D HQ, so instead I settled for HDPE. Using nothing more than double-sided tape because my part would go right up to the edges of my stock, I secured my HDPE block to the Nomad and loaded up an 8th inch single flute plastic cutter from Harvey Tool. At the time, this was my only single flute tool that was 8th inch all the way down. Now let's review the tool pads I had lined up. First up is an adaptive clear. 10,000 RPM, 48 inches or 1200 millimeters per minute. Since this is a single flute cutter, that means our chip load is a really healthy 4.8 thou or 0.12 millimeters. No machining boundary and stock contours are allowed to default to the setup extents. This tool path is going to blow through every last cubic inch of unneeded material. Optima load 50 thou 1.27 mm, depth of cut 8th inch 3.175 mm, radial stock to leave 10 thou 5 thou in axial, roughly a quarter and an eighth millimeters respectively. That's plenty of margin in a soft material where I don't expect a lot of vibration or deflection. Face off the top to get it smooth, initial finishing on the wall stopping just above the floor, pocket toolpath to finish the lower level. Final finishing on the walls, stopping one thou above the floor because I want that pocketing toolpath to have had the final say there in order to keep the surface finish consistent. Machine the gigantic counterbores in my mounting block in one toolpath, machine the shallower counterbores separately so I can specify a lower starting height, pocket finish the bottom of the counterbore, spring pass on the walls, parallel finish the chamfer on the back edge of the mounting block. This feature is there to theoretically help the pocket NC tool holder get a millimeter or two closer to my stock without crashing the collet nut. Contour up with a continuous spiral down to full depth to pour out the 4mm holes for mounting hardware, and a final contour op to profile the size of the fixture. Boom. This program is a one-tool wonder. Back in real life, I loaded up my toolpath in carbide motion, zeroed off the wasteboard, added a couple thou to account for the tape, and hit run. My original toolpath started at 40 inches per minute, but judging by the sounds of the cut, I figured that there was performance left untapped, so I used feed rate override to arrive at 48 inches per minute. You could probably push faster if you didn't mind the degrading tone of the cut, but 48 seemed like a safe place to stay. One thing I regretted not doing was using a both ways adaptive. Given the retraction mode I had in place, there was a lot of inefficient movement in my toolpath. A both ways toolpath would have spared the Nomad a lot of vertical moves which aren't fully reflected in Fusion's machining time estimate. Efficiency gripes aside, the rest of the toolpaths executed nearly flawlessly. One thing about the model I would change in the future though is to offset the walls of my mounting boss from the outer profile to eliminate the risk of my short fluted cutter's shoulder rubbing against the wall, or allow me to use a cutter with a larger diameter shank that tapers down to an eighth of an inch. Also, I've been trying to eliminate the small strands of plastic that get stuck to my walls. I'm thinking it's a chip recutting problem and my instinct says I should apply more air blast and have thicker stock to leave when roughing. This way, the fatter shavings have more momentum and will clear the cutter flute better. I contacted Harvey and they suggested a two flute finisher and I'll give that a shot in a future video. The edge geometry ought to provide a cleaner cut, but if you have a better idea of what's going on, or suggestions to improve my wall finish, please share them in the comments below. 
Luckily, these stuck shavings are just barely fused to the walls and I can scrape them off pretty easily. The bolt hole pattern I machined on the Nomad aligns perfectly with the Pocket NC's B table. I made these holes exactly 4mm in diameter for M4 hardware, which admittedly usually measures about a tenth of a millimeter undersized, but even with just a couple bolts loosely attached, there's nearly zero play in my fixture. It might as well be pinned, I'm really happy with how well the Nomad held tolerances for this project. Pavel was tasked with a simple secondary op to mill out the horizontal through holes needed to bolt stock to this fixture. And with this simple piece completed, the door is now open to work holding larger blocks of material in a way that maximizes access to five of the six faces, which is important because the five axis project going on this machine will require every side to be machined. This fixture is just the tip of a very large project iceberg, and if you follow me on Instagram, you probably already know what I've been cooking up, the most technically challenging part I've ever attempted. A titanic undertaking both from a cam and machining perspective that very nearly ended in failure but you'll get that story in due time. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and Pavel and I will be back soon with some crazy multi-axis fun.